chance to look at the game there. What was the difference between the first and second halves where the offense just seemed to find its footing in the second half at Auburn? You know, um, to be honest with you, in the, in the first half, you know, I thought we moved the ball decent. We just, we get down there and, and we don't, uh, we can't settle for field goals. We got to score touchdowns in the red area. And, you know, I got to do a better job having that red area plan. And, uh, but, you know, bottom line, um, we've got to be better on third downs, right? We were poor on our third down, but we get down to the red area. And, you know, in in today's college football, you got to maximize the possessions. And we get down there, and we, we've got to score touchdowns, and we can't settle for field goals. Uh, so, you know, I felt like we left some points uh, on the field there in the first half. And then, you know, I was I was proud of the way that they continued to battle in the second half. Uh, but you know, uh, we don't have that much. There's not that much room uh, for error. There's not that much margin for error where we can go down and, and just settle for field goals or accept, you know, three and outs. As the quarterback's coach and play caller, I mean, how often do you sit down with Mike and kind of go over what he's comfortable with and what he wants to do? I mean, I guess basically how involved is he with you when it comes to game planning? Yeah, um, all the quarterbacks uh, are, are involved, but uh, especially situational, you know, on Thursdays we sit down uh, with the quarterbacks and particularly the starter for that week, whoever it's going to be, and talk about, you know, each of these uh, concepts and, and you know, do you feel comfortable? Do you not feel comfortable? And, and we do. We kind of have like a ranking order where I say, hey, man, this concept's going to be really good if they're giving us this coverage. Um, but he might not feel great about it or might not feel confident in that throw, and so we move it down. Uh, so we do. We, we sit down and we try to go through my call sheet uh, and make sure that he's comfortable uh, with, with each of those throws. Um, and like I said, particularly in those critical third down and, and red area situations. You mentioned you. That, just uh, how, how how much is freshman uh, Chris Parson picking all that up? You know, Chris has done a great job of, of picking up the offense. And, um, you know, each week we've tried to kind of uh, limit a little bit and make sure that we're not throwing too much on them. Um, and, you know, once you kind of get in the flow of a season and you start seeing, you know, what the average third and three to six is, how many plays you're getting, the average third and seven to ten, you get a little bit better idea uh, because, uh, you, you know, you don't want to carry too much. But Chris Parsons, to get back to your question, has done a phenomenal job. And he's, he's so uh, eager and, and he asks questions. And Will and Mike have got a lot of experience and he's sitting there asking them, well, hey, how would you read this if it was cover three? Or how would you read this if it was you know, cover two? Ooh, hey, in this third down, they're playing Tampa two, so what should my answer be? Uh, Chris, Chris has done a great job. It's obviously in hindsight, and, and coaches across the country do, but in, in those fourth and one situations, why, why not go under center there and, and, and rather than you know, a shotgun look? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. You know, I, uh, you, you always look back, and, and everything that you do, right, you always go back and you evaluate yourself. And, uh, you know, the, the one uh, thing that I would have done different is, you know, uh, taking it out of a, a read uh, hand, you know. Uh, you get there in your second, uh, fourth and short, and the first time they bring Sam and strong safety off the edge. So you've got a little bit of concern that they're going to you know, be able to get to your running back up there. So trying to hold him and control him uh, on the edge. Um, but, you know, I mean, uh, getting under center is, is something that, you know, uh, obviously, you know, going forward, you know, I've got to do a better job of carrying uh, some of those calls in our plan. How much does it swing the momentum of the game when you do miss those short conversions? You know, um, I think the, the momentum right there uh, swung, you know, uh, pretty heavily. And, uh, you know, and there's no one else to blame but me, right? Um, I got I to gotta get these guys in position on those fourth and ones uh, that we got to go convert those. And we've got to get excited about fourth and one when we get in those situations um, about getting those, not, uh, oh, my gosh, it's fourth and one. You know what I'm saying? We got to attack that moment um, and, and attack that situation. Um, but you know what? Um, it, it, it's one play at a time. And, you know, sure, there can be momentum changes in games, uh, but we've got to get to a point where, you know, it, it doesn't matter. We've got to be able to overcome whatever adversity there is that, that comes. Career day for Xavion. Uh, what do you make of the way he's just been uh, developing as still one of the younger guys in this offense and coming into his own of late? Yeah, Xavion is an extremely talented receiver, and I was really proud of him and, and some of the plays that he made on Saturday. Um, you know, he, he's a kid that if the ball is in the air, right, there's a really good chance he's going to come down with it somehow, some way. Um, as soon as he touches the ball, he's got a chance to create explosives. You know, and I see the, his detail in his game improving week by week. You know, the, the detail in his routes and, and setting this guy up and finding the blind spots and getting to his depth. And I think 
last week he had his best week of practice, um, and that correlated to his best game so far. Mike took the responsibility after the game about so many passes that were just off, maybe a yard out of bounds or not quite delivered on time that should have been big catches, and he took the blame for it. At this point of his career, how do you work on those things to get those balls more catchable? You know, it, it's really um, a timing thing and, and understanding that internal clock and how soon I got to get the ball out of my hand. Um, you know, and, and it is, it, it's split second, right? I mean, it's the difference in, uh, you know, a, a toe touch or not. And, uh, but, you know, Mike's, Mike's timing, I've got no, no, no question on it at all. He's got a strong enough arm. He can accurately place the ball. Um, and, you know, um, I, I've got to do a better job of giving him some concepts that uh, he can get it out quicker. I'm sure you were frustrated more than anybody, but when you see a play where Tulu and Xavier run into each other like that, I, what causes that? Yeah, um, you know, it, it was. And, you know, in those situations where, uh, you know, you're in a, a go for it on fourth down situation, you get a little bit um, more aggressive with the call and trying to get a little gadget in. And, you know, really stuff like that is, is more so we've got to do a better job during the week of, of cleaning up those details. And, you know, that goes back to making sure that I'm not, you know, trying to do too much or give them too much. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys.